Hello and welcome to a video tutorial on how to make a low poly image in Photoshop. So you will need to open Photoshop to start with. Then you'll need to open up a file. Um, I'm starting with an image of a fox. You can do the same. So we're just going to file and open. And hopefully you have an image of JPG saved already. So we're going to open that. We're going to do this with a um, front-on facing image um, and you can do this with any image but we'll, we'll work with this one as it is. Um, so what you need to do to start with is just check your resolution of your image. So we're gonna print this when we're finished so we're gonna go image, image size and we're gonna change the resolution from 72 which is internet size to 300 resolution as pixels per inch um, and hit OK. OK, so that zooms in. Um, we can zoom out by going view, zoom out, view, zoom out, or we can do the quick command tools. Um, if you're using Windows, they'll be different to Mac. OK, let's just make this this big size as well here. OK. Um, all right, so once you've done that, you're going to need to set up this grid. And to put the grid on, you can go View, Show, Grid. And you need a tick next to that Show thing. So if you click that, the tick will come, and your grid should come up. You'll also need to set up these rulers here. So you can do that by going View, Show, oh, View here, Rulers. OK, and that way your rulers will come up. Um, so this might be different depending on what your settings are. The grid should look different, perhaps, to you. Um, I'm happy with the sizes of the boxes right now for mine, but yours might be different. So you can change the size of the boxes by, if you're in on PC, you can go edit um, and come down to the bottom and there'll be a, a, a preferences to click on. With, with my newer version, I have to go Photoshop preferences. Once you're in preferences, you can go guides, grid, slices. And here, I want it to be um, one box for every centimeter. Um, and that looks like that because my image is a certain size. Your image might be a different size, so it might look differently. Roughly, you're looking for about that kind of feel. Um, we're also going to divide our uh, face in half because we're going to only do the technique to half the face then we're going to flip it so it's symmetrical so I'm going to click on the ruler and drag and I'm going to pop this um, line right down the middle of my face like this okay so I know that's where I'm working from what you'll also notice is that if I click on here I'm able to select that line again and I can move it if I'm not happy with where it's set what you'll notice is that at the moment my line has stopped at the edge of one of those boxes. Okay, um, that's because it's snapping, and we want we want that to to happen throughout this technique. So we need to turn that on so we can go view, uh, show. Oh, sorry, snap. So snap to uh, grid and snap to guides. So those need to be ticked on, and that will become clear later. Okay. Um, so we need to cut out the head of the fox um, and we want a white background. So to do that we have to uh, make a new layer and this is going to be our background, a white background. So I'm going to double click here and just name that background. So this is our layers box here. So now I've got this empty layer here. So we're going to turn this white. And we can do that by clicking over here. You might have a, it might show gradient, so you're going to hold down your left mouse button and the paint bucket will come up. Now I want this to be white, so I can come down to the color down here, click on that, and move this so it turns white. Okay. Now with my paint bucket, I'm going to click and my screen will turn white. Okay. So I want the fox back on top. So I'm going to go back to this background layer. I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate the layer. Okay. 
So, and then I'm going to, now this is duplicated here. So I'm going to click and I'm going to drag that so it goes above the background. Okay, so these are the different layers. Here's the original image, the new background layer I've created, and my new image, and this one, I'm going to double click, oops, I'm going to double click on the name, and I'm going to call this triangles, because this is where I'm, I'm going to make my triangles. Here, in this image. All right, so now I'm going to cut away from here. So I'm going to do that by coming up to here, left click mouse button, and click on Poly Lasso Tool, select that. And now I'm going to cut out the shape of the head. And I want it to be quite, have some detail, but not too much. I want it to be quite jagged. So I'm going to just start to click. And you can see I'm drawing straight lines to get the shape. So lots of clicking in the different areas. to roughly get that shape I need. And just all the way around, keep going. Once you get back to the beginning, where you started, just double click and that will give your selection. So right now everything on the inside of that shape is selected. Now I want to delete the outside so I have to select the outside. So I have to come up to select at the top and I go inverse selection. And now with my keyboard I'm going to hit delete and that gets rid of that. Okay so now you can really see the layers. Um, here, the eye um, shows us the layer, so if I click on the eye, the layer disappears, comes back, background disappears, comes back. Okay. Alright, so now I just begin the, with the triangles. So I'm going to come back, I still select on this poly uh, lasso tool, which, it, which enables me to draw shapes. So I'm going to draw my first triangle here against this, um, this centre line. So let's draw... Let's draw this shape here. And it's okay if you go outside of your actual thing and then double click again to uh, make the selection. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is go view, I'm sorry, go filter, um, blur, and average. Now you can see if I zoom in here, view, zoom in, view. In. That has blurred and given a, a, a tone here that makes the average of all the other tones within that box. Okay, so that's how it's done. Um, now, what we're going to do is set up a, um, an action so that we don't have to go always go filter. Basically, we cut a few clicks out because we're going to make a lot of these triangles now. Um, so, to do that, we're going to have to open this actions box. So you have to go to Window, and you have to click on this one, Actions, and then this box should pop up. It will be on History to start with. Click on the Actions tab. Let's just open that up here. Okay, so we're going to make a new action. Um, here. So we're going to call it I don't know, Triangle. And we're going to give it a function so that I... Only when every time I press F1 and Shift, for example, or Command, anyway, Command and F1, this this uh, blurring should happen. So OK. Um, so now I'm going to make my selection. So I'm going to draw a triangle. And when I choose, when I draw over my triangles, I'm looking for things that are of similar tone. So this whole area here looks similar. There we go. And it's okay if it overlaps a little bit with the previous one. Let's zoom in there. Okay. So, 
Ooh, and I've got that selected, and I go filter, blur, average, and there we go. And I'm going to stop recording. So I hit stop here. So that is what we want to keep doing. So if I do that again, I'm going to choose an area that I want to make a triangle out of. So let's say here. And this time, if I hold down shift, oops, undo, edit, not like that. Step back. Average, and if I hit play, it should blur out that. Okay. Great. So each time I hit average and I hit play, that should work. Alright, we'll do one more time just for the demo. Um, let's come down here. Let's do this triangle here that looks like the right kind of tone and then there, great so that's how that's it, that's how we do it, so keep going um, keep trying to make triangles, look for tones that are similar together and until you fill up half of your of your image okay so once that's done you're going to come over to so it should look like this. So here I have half of my image selected, um, finished with triangles. So I want to duplicate that and switch it to save me doing the whole thing. I'll just copy and paste it. So here I'm going to go back onto my triangles layer. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to use this box and draw, make a selection using this box. So just drawing over everything on that side, like so. Now I'm going to edit, copy, edit, paste. And what you see is that half of that layer has duplicated. So let's put that back on top for where it came from because it's just moved down ever so slightly. So I'm going to click on that select button, button. And I'm just going to drag that back up so it sits perfectly back on top. There, great. Okay, from here, I'm going to grab this arrow and I'm going to flick that over like I'm turning a page and I'm going to sit that back on top of there. Now you can see that the fox actually isn't a symmetrical fox so I can show you what to do there to hide that original background so just pop it on to about where you'd like it that looks good to me um, and hit enter when you're done Next, we're going to just turn off that layer, click it here, and I'm going to use this eraser here on the original layer, and I'm just going to rub out any bits along that side that was poking through. You can change the size of the eraser here, but with right click, and that box will pop up, so I'm just going to rub out there. That's enough. Okay, turn that back on. And there we have it. Finished. So to finish properly, just make sure that you file, save as, I'm going to call it full fox face. And I'm going to save it as a JPEG. So make sure that it's a nice high quality file. Okay, and that's it.